we deployed uh, EPC packet call system onto the Kubernetes cloud cluster already. In this video, we will deploy the E node B and the UE onto the same Kubernetes cloud cluster onto the same network namespace and then after the inode B and the UE is being deployed it will initiate the connection with the packet call system and then we will see the traffic and the logs from that connectivity let's do that Just to double check um, what we're having in the Kubernetes. Uh, and first of all, uh, the cluster we use is the same cluster uh, we implement EPC last time. Uh, that's using the infrastructure of VirtualBox VM, uh, including two VM nodes node 1 and node 2 right now inside that namespace there are lib support and resources uh, for the EPC here are the list of the port and resources for EPC that we deployed beforehand now to deploy uh, the new resource of inode B and UE, we use the Rancher dashboard. We go to Application and Marketplace. We choose the Open Versal repository. I added this repository beforehand. So inside this repository, we choose SIS LTE, which include Inode B and UE. We choose Open Telco Cloud, the same name, network namespace with the EPC. We can name it enoB UE1 for the values uh, I change the IMZ value to this one zero zero one zero one one and then one two three four five six seven eight nine I keep uh, the key and the OPC with the default values and then hit install so in the ham chart application and marketplace window it says ham install success and in the command line prompt let's see if we have the same result yes the UE and e node B ports are created successfully just now We will go to the port uh, using the Kubernetes dashboard to double check the result. Here we choose the namespace, open telco cloud, hit overview, and we got the same result besides the EPC resources we got now the port just newly created for the inode B and the UE now we need the UE 
and the E node B to initiate connection with the MME. Right now, let's go to the port and we go into the MME port to view the lock. We do the same thing for E node B. And right now, the locks inside the inode B and EV, it says the MME isn't connected. MME isn't connected. So it is trying to establish the connection with the MME, but the MME isn't connected. There is one thing we need to change here that is the IP address uh, of the MME at the E node B in order for the E node B to reach out to the MME properly so what we need to do we need the IP address of the MME let's go for the, the service We need this one in the MME cluster IP. We choose this one. We prefer the cluster IP of the MME rather than the, the port IP address because in the Kubernetes domain, um, the port IP address is is more changing than that of the cluster IP so we prefer this cluster IP IP address we pick this one we go back to the port we go to choose the full set now we choose the config map first we go to the config map window config maps is a kind of the resource containing configuration information uh, for the deployed port and services and applications so we need to change config map information of the e node b ue hit edit config and then inside this one we choose i think we choose the wrong one let's choose okay the e node b and the ue that we just create is the e node b and the ue one we find the enoob.conf file and then we enter the IP address which is copy 10.43.63.56 into the MME address inside the enoob.conf file for the other thing we can also change the enode B if we want but it is not mandatory so other things and values we keep as the default we hit save and in order for this change to be effective we need to go to the stateful set
we need to go to the stateful set and we need to choose that of the inner B if we want and we hit redeploy in order for the new parameters to be applied own resource is being terminated in order for the new one to be created. The new inode B port is successfully recreated with the new parameters and this time it is the right MME's IP address and with that the new inode B now is able to reach out to the MME to establish the needed connectivity so let's go back to the port and we check again the logs file in both MME and B. Here at the MME lock it says number of MME session is now one implying um, there is an active connectivity from the E node B with the MME We go to the inode B itself and the same information is confirmed. There's a user UE successfully connected. We do one we would do one more final check. We go into the inode B to see the actual interface that is created for this UE by the P gateway in this context that is the UPF the UPF is the user plane gateway or the P gateway responsible for establishing the PDP context for the UE and uh, right now it successfully it successfully assigned the IP address for the UE and the IP address is with 10.45.0.2 interface name is TAN SIS UE and the gateway at the UPF or the P gateway U is named OGS TAN the IP address of the gateway is 10.45.0.1 it's in line with that of the PDP contact created at the UE and the final check would be to send the traffic from this PDP contact using this interface to the outside world. Let's ping to google.com and successful at the MME it also says the service request is successful and the UE is having the connectivity with the internet using the PDP contact created by the P gateway of the MME. So 
That's it. We successfully deployed both the E node B and the E V for the RAN LTE network into the same Kubernetes cloud cluster that we deployed the EPC network functions beforehand. Thank you.